want to take a couple of minutes and talk about Autodesk Fusion 360 Direct Modeling. In this particular model, I have a history tree. You can see that the last feature was a cutout using a sketch. So it is a, a parametric model based on the sketch. It will also be referred to as relationship modeling. Now direct modeling does not have a history tree such as this part which is brought over as a step file from Inventor. There is no history tree, there is no sketches, there is no way to modify except direct modeling. Now direct modeling has three basic functions. They all relate to surfaces. You can move, rotate surfaces, you can press full surfaces, you can delete surfaces. I'm going to add one more and that is to edit holes directly. That's a separate process. Normally you reserve direct modeling for non-parametrically or relationship design parts such as this one. I would recommend adding your design or capture design history to the part by right clicking on the top level and capture design history. There is my solid piece. Now I'm going to add some direct modeling to it. For example, I would like to move this hole in 8 millimeters and the one on the opposite side. So I'll just put a window around it and capture it as all surfaces. Right click and say move copy. I have a, a variety of moving types. I'm just going to move it down 8 millimeters. So I can simply drag it and type in minus 8 millimeters or drag it to minus 8 and say OK. It's that simple. Notice I have captured the move in my history tree if I needed to get rid of it. I'm going to do the other one. I'm going to put a window around that feature. Do the same thing. But this time I'm going to move the origin. You can set the pivot anywhere you want. I'm going to set it right there. Finish your set pivot and then again drag it. Whatever makes sense to you. So that was moved 8 millimeters up. Again, I have another feature in my tree. Let's say, for example, I would like to get rid of these two bolt holes on the outside. So again, put a window around the bolt hole and right click and delete it. Same thing with the other one. You could do them both at the same time. I don't know what I did on that one, but I did something strange. Let's try again. Delete. Okay, so now I've deleted certain faces and again captured in my tree. Let's do a press pull on the chamfer. Again, I can't modify it without direct modeling. So I can pick on it, right click and do press pull. Notice it's showing zero. I'm going to go in from the original minus two. Same thing on the bottom one. Turn it up a little bit so I can see it. Pick on it, right click, press pull and drag it in minus two. So that's an example of press pull in direct modeling. Now I'll come back to this model in just a second. In this model it was also brought in from Inventor as a step file. I would like to show you the use of the rotate function. Again I have no history tree so I'm going to right click on the top level and capture design history. So I have a record of what I do. So the first thing I want to do, I want to rotate this keyway in relation to this slot by 15 degrees. Half of one of the uh, indexing functions. So I'm going to turn around a little bit so I can put a window around it all. Capture that. And then I'm going to go and right click and say move. And I'm going to do a rotation. I'm going to pick up my axis by clicking on the outside surface and then simply drag it minus 15 degrees. Now that's really the only way you can do this without erasing it and redoing with a sketch. So direct modeling is a great feature for this. Please note that the move went into my history so if I wanted to I can go back or forward whichever I want to do just like a regular parametric model. Let's expand a little bit on the direct modeling for holes. Now down in the tree you notice we have the when we capture design we have the base feature. If you right click on this and say edit you are now editing in direct finish direct feature modeling. 
So if you expand the bodies and right click on the body here, you can actually say find features. You can pick what features you want to find. I'm going to select them all and say OK. Notice it adds them to the browser. I'm interested in modifying this, these two holes. So I'm going to find them in a tree. They happen to be the last mirror. So I'm going to dissolve this into its two features, the two holes. I'm going to pick on one at a time and edit the hole. Notice you have the full edit hole function. You can even change the type to simple if you want to, or change the diameter, whatever you want to do. It's easy enough to do with direct modeling on the hole. This is an expanded function. Let's just do it on this bottom one. I don't use a crossing. I want to use a window to select it. Didn't get it all. Try again. I then, there it is right there. I can right click, edit hole, and let's just change to a countersink. And you can actually drag the changes for whatever you want for the countersink. So direct modeling on holes is a little bit special. Now when you finish, hit the finish space feature and it will finish off. Now I have two errors because I modified the two parts I created move before, so I'm just going to delete those. There are occasions when you want to take a parametrically modeled part or relationship model part and change it into direct modeling features. This could be for a number of reasons. For example, you want to separate these two cutouts and make them different sizes. Or you want to change one of the chamfers with that effect in the other. Now, to do this, you can right click on the feature and simply say convert to DM feature. Now they're a direct model solid part. So you could come up here and pick on this face and do a move and actually move that face over some distance, for example, one inch, and make an entirely different slot. You also can move the holes. I can pick on that face and move it. I can move the hole. Now remember, you can move your origin to another place, set your pivot to something else. If you want, be sure you take it off that reset and then move from there measuring from something else. Another thing you can do with a hole in this mashed fashion is do a press pull and change the diameter of it. I wanted to use the hole editing function on this particular hole down here. So I'll right click on my solid body, edit it, and notice there is a feature right there it picks up in the tree. If I right click on it and say edit hole, I get an error because it's going the wrong way. This is a flaw in Fusion and it's been reported. Hopefully they'll fix it soon. What you want to do then is to fix this very quickly. Right click on the body and dissolve all features. Then you want to go back to the body and find features. And in this case, I'm only one in holes. So say OK and it brings the holes back. There's a hole I want, so I right click now and I can edit the hole as I thought. Again, I can make it accountable or countersink or to keep it like it is. I can make it larger or smaller, whichever I want. I have my full edit hole functionality. So just remember that little bit of error, this is all the features to correct it. One last point I want to make before I finish is that your sketches that were done to create features, such as those cutouts, or these ones in the center are now no longer viable. For example, if I take and move this face in a direct modeling mode, I'll just move it over a certain distance so you can see it. If I pick on the sketch, you'll notice it doesn't match up anymore. It is no longer any use to you. You can just simply delete it. The sketch is no longer available once you turn it into a direct model. Hope you find some use for this. Thank you very much.